Oh, hello there, travellers. Long time no see. Or, if you're new here, welcome. I'm Tony, and I'm the dungeon master for the following adventure, a marble mystery set in a brand new location in the Thousand Island continent, the country of Maya Kailora, or more specifically, its capital city, the city of Pietra. Pietra is a grand and vibrant city situated on the south coast of the island, made instantly recognisable by its magnificent buildings made from the finest marble marble that Maya Kailora is famous for producing. Much like the city of Venice in our world, Pietra consists of a complex and intricate canal system that allows visitors to explore the city and traders to import and export goods with ease. The royal palace sits in the northernmost point of the city, which is where the Kailorian royal family resides. But you'll learn more about them once the story unfolds. Now, you've heard me banging on about law long enough. Let's just start the adventure, shall we? And roll the damn dice! Roll the damn dice. I'm Tony, and I will be DMing for the first time for, for the uh, for the show. Um, you may notice we're in a slightly different location today, and we are in the lovely light and space in the country. And you could stay here if you wanted to. Check it out on Airbnb. I'm sure there's a link somewhere down below. Um, I mean, I, I do it, so there will be. Um, uh, and yeah, welcome to Marble Mysteries, my lovely little one shot that I've spent nine months agonising over. So it better be bloody good. So, gang. Your characters have been hired by an anonymous source to help collect evidence for a confidential case. Usually, you wouldn't bother with a case such as this. You're far too qualified for a glorified scavenger hunt. Well, <laughs> but there's something different about this case. The money. Who would pay you and four other detectives one thousand gold pieces each for something as easy as collecting evidence for a case that appears to already be solved. You decide to take the case. Let's be honest, no one's too proud to turn down 1k. Um, if it turns out to be something dodgy, you can just get yourself out of there. So, let's set the scene, shall we? Balasar's Clockwork Emporium is a relatively small shop located near the centre of the city of Pietra, in the, the capital of Maya K. Laura. The inside of the shop is immaculate, not a single trace of dust, not even a cog out of place. The walls of the shops are covered in clocks of all various shapes, sizes and types, and are all showing the exact same time, almost down to the second. Behind the counter of the shop stands Balasar himself, a deep maroon dragonborn wearing a spotless white shirt with his sleeves rolled up over his elbows. In his claw is a small screwdriver with which he is tinkering away at a cuckoo clock. Despite his large hands, he is extremely delicate as if caring for a newborn baby. He finishes his work, puts, away, puts his tools away in their rightful drawers and places the cuckoo clock on the wall where it is the perfect size space just for it. As he walks back behind the counter, a bell can be heard, and the shop door opens and in walks a Loxodon. Paul, would you like to introduce yourself and your character? Fuck me! <laughs> oh. Fucking hell. Right. I'll demonetise in the first five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a big, yeah, a Loxodon, eight foot, eight foot tall, big, 300 pounds, wearing a uh, three-piece uh, green suit, walks in. Um, he's got a satchel, he's got a, a sort of um, staff slash mace. He says, oh, where's, uh, where's this fellow with the hundred grand? Well, um, one grand, one grand, that will do. Okay, I think there's some more of you, so I think I'd rather just have everybody come in. Oh, fuck, soon Queen's and... coming, fucking hell. Fucking does my nut in. Right, okay, okay, maybe, maybe, just, maybe just bring it down a bit, we don't have to be drawing too much You've attention got, to like, ourselves. Coffee, <laughs> biscuits. <laughs> You've got a gathering, where's the snacks? Alright, oh, uh, uh, fine, I'm sure I can 
grabs something, Balasar goes. We had a long journey from the Plugger, were not we? Yes, I'm sure we've all had long we journeys. We've done this all the way. Uh, so Balasar <laughs> goes back to the back of the store <laughs> and he puts on a pot of coffee. Um, and he's fiddling with one of the clocks. Oh, no. Um, <laughs> Balasar comes out with a cup of coffee, walks straight over to the clock you've just been fiddling with, puts it to the exact right time, hands you the coffee, and then just walks back behind ha- the counter. Hand notes this is a hilarious gag for the rest of the session. <laughs> <laughs> well, luckily, you're not going to be in here for too much longer. The bell goes again, and in walks a furbolg. Luke. Oh, okay. So, Helig is a furbolg, um, sort of dark. Um, purplish blue fur um, very the opposite to everyone else now in this shop he's raggedly dressed um, the clothes are um, just stained through wear with rips and tatters he's got a, a cloak that is sort of he's got his hood up and it's far too big even for him he's just over eight foot and this cloak still trails along behind him um, and yeah he's going to stoop in, well, Dragon Ball's pretty tall, isn't it? Has he got a stoop um, much to get see, in? See, I would say actually no, because the door... So Maya Kaylora is very um, sort of diverse in the amount of... in, in oh. the kind of species that populate it. So most of the doors there are built pretty big to no. kind of accommodate um, a number of sort of people like Goliaths, Furbolgs, Loxodons, all sorts. So, it does um, feel like one of the, I feel like, what, like I'm one of those, in one of those shops where there's too many... Precious things to close. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. all the trying not to knock everything yeah. over. Yeah, I mean, like, so Helig, he'll go to like stoop through the door and then just like look up through and he's like, oh, that's that's good. Um, and like he he's nearly skin and bone. He's got no no muscle or anything to him. So he, he'll wrap himself up in the cloak and um, is um, this the right place? He's looking away like quite. Uh, I'm uh, sure. Han, Han will take a silver piece out of his uh, place. He goes, ego, ego, mate. Yeah. <laughs> and he presses like a silver piece into your head. You get yourself a hot meal. Go on. Well, I'm, I'm quite okay. I'll take it. I'm, I'm <laughs> okay. Thank you. And he'll tuck it. You don't look okay, mate. I'm fine. I'm fine. All right. Are you here for the case? The job. Yes. 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 Lovely. Would you like a coffee? I've made a pot for this one, so. <laughs> uh, no, I'm, I'm okay. And he, he'll take out a very worn... And little water skin, and he'll just be sipping from that. I think we need to get you a better, better some better clobber. Well, no. if you're both going on this case, I'm imagining you'll probably have quite a lot to to work with afterwards if you do it correctly. That is. Don't mind getting you a suit, mate. Honestly, no, I'll take I'll take the money. Um, I just I've <laughs> I got mean, other things I need to spend it on. If you do want some clothes, I know that uh, Legacies up the roads does a, a vast range of, of lovely oh, clothes. Nice. So um, it's a big department store sort of thing, you know. Um, Bell goes again, and in walks a an elf. More. Hi, elf, darling. Hi. <laughs> um, yes. Hi, I'm May. Um, and Quinn is a high elf um, of the moon. Uh, very pale, kind of grey, purplish skin. Um, sort of very dark, short bob. Um, and in a strapless. I wouldn't say ball gown. That's a little too mu- too far flung. Um, but she's tra- she's always dressed for the occasion, um, and the occasion always uh, requires stilettos and a strapless gown, um, no matter what. Um, and she's going to come in. Um, Hans, did you really have to storm on ahead? We really, it's not, it's not uh, ladylike to seem too keen. Well, we want the money, don't we? Well, yes, but... And I've been in a boat with you for weeks. Mm, Just ch- needed to clear my head, didn't I? Charming. This Bad is stuff. Queen. Yeah. <laughs> How uh, do you do? I'm and as she, as she turns around to face um, Han, um, Balazar will see that there is an enormous great axe um, affixed <laughs> to her shoulders um, with these kind of metal clamps that seem to kind of go into her um under her skin um affixed to her skeleton uh that is sort of holding on to this enormous great axe um for her um and then it, they're sort of they're gold and out of that gold comes this sort of gold tattooing across her back uh, just to incorporate it to make it a little more elegant balasar being a quite a fan of like 
engineering and clockwork obviously he's gonna get his like little tiny tiny little glasses out of his pocket and just sort of put them on and just have a little look while, you, while you're not looking because he doesn't want to appear rude but he's like oh interesting she's a muscle <laughs> i can tell queen queen this fella not a tramp <laughs> <laughs> what, kind, what type of time of day is it is it evening it's no 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 no. it's it's um so it's going to be more like it's probably like midday to be honest okay, sort of midday it, like after no, i mean the shop yeah the shops shops open it's quite quiet but um balsar likes it that way so okay. oh, it's uh, not at the moment obviously it turned around <laughs> to point out this tramp helling has now found the dark corner and it's just like stood in the dark corner like no no just uh just save him a penis yeah he's not he's not a tramp just chosen to dress that way. Oh well, to each his own, I suppose. Yeah, well, he's well, called Delic. Oh, is that uh, with an H? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You've always got to check with him. I've been trying to give him elocution lessons this entire journey over, but he won't. It won't stick. Oh, um, see, I thought his name was Anne this uh, entire <laughs> time. Oh no, it's Anne Rimmel with an H. Right. Uh, the first few months of knowing him, I was the same. Um, so should be calling me Anne. <laughs> <laughs> the bell rings again, and in walk our last two members of the party: a tabaxi and a human. Jamie. Uh, yeah. So uh, your tabaxi is Coastal Village. Uh, <laughs> Coastal Village is a uh, black, white, and grey tabaxi. Um, uh, she is wearing um, sort of purple. Um, leather gauntlets and uh, a maroon military military jacket that she definitely won off a bloke in a bet um and uh she is accompanied by um herb so herb is a human but he's only about five foot six um so barely human um and he has tussled blonde hair um really clean shaven face very twinky in appearance with huge red eyes he is a priest and he is um, a cleric um, and he worships Paladine. Um, oh, Paladine. that's nice. Yeah, oh. he's, he's a priest in the orders of Paladine, not a, not a noble warrior. Ah, uh, cool. Yeah, that's um, a good then. And he, and <laughs> so he does have chain mail, but this is underneath um, just flowing white robes. Um, he does have a stick, which is more for sort of walking with. Um, possibly could hit someone with it, but I doubt it would do very much damage. Um, and yeah, so he's just following along behind Coastal, and she's like, so when they say confidential, that means like, you've got to keep it quiet, right? That means that you keep your lovely little mouth shut. Oh. And, um, uh, Herb, Herb, we're late. We're on a confidential quest, everyone! Herb, mm. what have we talked about? Balasar is very stressed. <laughs> There's a lot of people in his shop, most of whom are above six foot. Oh yeah, six two. Uh, no, not and that. then two, and then two like two tiny little people who were screaming. And so he's like, oh god, okay, it's fine, it's fine. What they lack in height, they make up for in volume. And fat. <coughs> yeah, so I um, like them. You two are here for the. Confidential. The money. Quest. The money. Right. Though, and we're here for the money. Money. I see. You you told me that it was new boots. Oh no, it's not for us. Oh. The money's not for us. Oh, to give to but the you, poor. But to give to the poor, and then you ah. you can have. Then you get. Yeah, oh, he's real poor. Give it to him. Bal okay. Balasar knows this is absolutely not true, but he doesn't give a shit enough to say otherwise. <laughs> he just wants them to leave. Right. Okay. Well, lovely. Now you're here. I'm. I'm not necessarily the one giving you your quest that is um my friend Maurik. i will introduce you to him in a second um but yes this is this is quite confidential uh so i will warn you that maybe hey bitch no <sighs> yes i'm um, looking at you little fella are you okay there just i mean, like talking a lot balasar oh, is gonna lovely. go balasar is gonna go t just back into the back very quickly and pull out like a lollipop that he's got like a stash for kids just to, uh, to distract them from not like touching all the clocks and he goes I feel like you could use this I'll give him sugar oh, or give good. him something to stop talking with I mean I have magically sewn his mouth up before we can do that mm, um, mm, maybe mm, mm, mm. you're going to be quiet mm, good boy mm, mm, mm. I'm sorry he's a rescue oh okay <laughs> I understand <laughs> um Balasar uh, there's, a, so there's another door 
So they've got the back door behind his counter and then there's an, another door that um, it kind of seamlessly blends in with the wall. It's also covered in clocks. It was not quite as noticeable and he just sort of pushes it to and it, it kind of sinks into the wall and then kind of comes out and opens the door. Oh, um, and he he kind of gestures for you to, to go in ahead of him and you find yourself in Balasar's Sorry, I know what's going to happen when I say this. Balasar's back room. Hey! <laughs> I'm not saying I know these guys, but... Um, so, you enter a room slightly larger than the shop floor, uh, but it seems almost like a different world. All the windows are boarded up. There are cups and plates all over the floor, newspaper cuttings messily pinned up all over the walls, except for one of the walls, which has a bunk bed pushed up against it. The top bunk has been made to the best of the owner's ability, whereas the bottom one looks like uh, looks as though the owner has just crawled out of bed. However, despite the mess, the room smells almost of flowers. Uh, if anybody is paying any particular attention to Balasar, you'll notice he's trying very, very hard to hide a look of disgust due to all the mess. On the top bunk is a young human boy who's sitting reading, whilst the dwarf is pacing up and down the centre of the room, reading various news clippings, all of which relate to the disappearance of the princess, Thea. Balasar says to the dwarf, They're here, Malric. Malric almost jumps, being so absorbed in his readings, and replies, Ah, oh, thank you, Balasar. Balasar nods and exits the room, but not before he straightens up a newspaper clipping as he walks past. <laughs> Balthasar sounds like a fucking nightmare to live with. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it makes good coffee though. <laughs> right, so you must be here for the uh, for the case. Right, you're the party, are you? Oh, um, yeah, I well, so. we uh, were a group of individuals. I wouldn't call us a party. Uh, I personally am always a party. <laughs> I like you. I like you. Um, you must be Coastal Village. That is me. Right, uh, I know. I know you. You don't oh, know me, but oh, I know you. Do me. Do me. Do me. Do me. Herb? Yeah! How did you guess? I have no idea. Um, <laughs> so, let's get into this, shall we? Let's just get down to business. Right, so I'm Malric. Nice to meet you all. Hi, Malric. Um, nice to meet you. Malric? Okay. Malric. So, the job. I need you to find me some evidence which points towards what happened to Princess Thea. <gasps> now, I don't know, I, I don't think any of you are from around here, so you probably don't know oh, who right. Princess Thea is. Princess I haven't Thea. got a clue. And so, so, has she been found? You see, that's where it, it turns a little bit sour. Um, unfortunately, I have reason to believe, well, no, I have proof to believe, and I know for a damn fact that Princess Thea was um, unfortunately killed. <gasps> oh, that's a shame. Have they got any plans for the corpse? Well, uh, uh, she already dis dis question. that. <laughs> well, not really. I've always got two jobs on the go. Oh, also, how old? Uh, how how long has she been dead? Oh, uh, I'd say like a couple of weeks now. Um, oh, a couple of weeks. Uh, I might be able to do something with that. Uh, well, I've buried her. Oh, not I, a good thing. A good thing. Not 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 a creepy thing. No, no. She's. I, I've I've buried her somewhere hidden. Um, right. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you the story. I'm gonna tell you what happened. So myself. I was, um, oh, this is Thomas, by the way. I didn't really introduce you. And Thomas, just from the top bunk, like, I like it. We've we all got, I uh, like a pet human. I've <laughs> <laughs> got my pet human. I've got my uh, elf. Uh, oh, that's your, oh, that's your pet. Yeah. Uh, okay. A, Good girl. A humans and elves are quite <laughs> different, really. <laughs> Quinn's um, <laughs> for PvP sessions today. It turns out <laughs> Quinn always has a handle on on the magical rage, um, <laughs> but there's just you're just gonna see like a little flash in her eyes, and she's gonna stare daggers at her. And Ad's just grinning back. <laughs> he thinks this is his best joke. I know. She's just gonna beam at him. <laughs> Coastal would like w would clock a little bit of magical rage and be like, oh. Okay, uh, magic easer. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna step back. <laughs> and uh, and and she'll just turn. Do go on. <laughs> yeah, <Right>. Sorry. <laughs> so Thomas Thomas just waves very slightly and then looks terrified at everything that's just happened. Um, and now it continues. I so 
I was uh, walking through the forest, you know, the forest that's outside of the, the city. I don't know if you noticed it at all when you came in, probably not. But anyway, first, um, and it was quite late at night. Um, I can't go out too much, you see. That's why I'm stuck in this back room, because um, old, you know, King uh, Varys uh, has me on, like, is, you know, keeping an eye on me, because uh, I'm very anti him. Um, but basically... I was walking around, I was doing a bit of foraging, you know, as it kind of, as you do. And I saw this cloaked figure rushing from the, from the palace. And they're carrying something. It looked like a, like a carpet or something like that. Oh, like a what? Like a carpet. A car. A rag A car. A car. A car. Was it an expensive car? I mean, I don't really know. I wasn't taking much notice of the... the what kind of design? Like shag? Or maybe some more intricate detailing? Her it was pretty intricate. It was like a carpet, darling. It was probably a body. Carry on. Oh, no, it was a body wrapped in a carpet. Right. So, I, no, 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 it was... It, oh. Um... Yeah, uh, uh, look, at, look at this. And Anna wife in his jacket and a tiny little bird flips out. There you go. You, you, you can play with him for a bit. And then I watched this... Just dump this body out. And, and leave it there, I, I, just outside the castle ground. So I don't know what the hell that was, go, what, what was going on there, but it just left in the forest and then, and then this figure ran out. And I have reason to believe that that figure was King Varys himself. I reckon he killed his own sister because she was very close to being crowned queen, you know. And unfortunately, the, the passing of their of their mother, the former queen, was was quite tragic um, and quite sudden, actually. Um, and she was meant to take take the throne until she mysteriously disappeared. And then uh, Varys got crowned instead. He made this big speech about, ah, oh, you know, oh, you know, I'm 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 so sad that my sister's gone missing, and I'm so like, oh, I hate to take the crown when you know when we're in the the, the cities in such disrepair. And oh, we, we, we. I could see right through that bullshit. I could. Um. So, I I need you to find the evidence to make sure that the king is thrown in prison for what he's done to his sister and our beloved princess. I mean, I, I see where you're coming from, obviously. Um, uh, couldn't we just, um, you know... Yeah, is there anyone Because else if you kill the king, you've committed heresy. Uh, yeah, yes, Herb. I mean, you know, we had that conversation. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we had it yesterday. Um, the day before as well. Yeah. Um, but three days before that, yeah. Mm -hmm. We don't do killing. All life is sacred, all life is precious, and even bad people deserve to live because how are they going to learn that they're bad and do things right if they don't know that they're bad because you killed them? Oh, he's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's why I keep him around. Um, all right then, um, so um, we, we need we to do should, jailing, jailing, um, arresting. We, yes, we'll just tell him that he's been bad and he should make better choices. I sum it like that, whatever. You guys will take care of it, right? Well, you, you guys know what, you know. I know where you need to go. It's just that I can't leave here because I will get arrested for heresy because I've been very loud about my anti-monarchist views, or at least that monarch anyway, you know. And, and Tom can't go out, can you, Tom? No. Um, I was caught stealing a, a loaf of bread, and so they, they, they threatened to kill me and so I have to stay here now. But my god! Were you like hungry? hungry? Well, yes, we, we were quite hungry. Me and my family were quite hungry, so... Uh, hang on, what kind of place did we come into? Uh, a loaf of bread you'd get arrested? Only since the bloody king's taken over. The queen before him, his mother, she was lovely. An absolute saint of a woman. This place was peaceful. It was a lovely place to live. Since that bastard's taken over, not an actual bastard, sorry, that's, again, it's my auntie. I, I've been caught calling him a bastard. People took it the wrong way. It was a whole thing. Mm. But that bastard has made this place into a bloody, uh, just just awful place to live. Is there anyone to... So it would be 
lovely if we could get him off, off um, sort of off the throne and all that. But is there anyone else to take over? Because otherwise, we'd just be leaving the leaving the place in a worse situation. Well, I there there is there is a there is a younger sister as well. Um, but she's she's quite young. But I imagine if she's got the right advisor, she could take over the throne. But I don't know. I've got mm. a question. You see, the thing is, all the monarchies around here. Has anyone noticed how they're all just a bit nuts? Yeah, they're always monarchy. just killing each other and like it's an outdated mode of government yeah like have you I, 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 I thought about democracy I mean it's not exactly up to me am I I'm trapped in a back room of some you know very picky bastard yeah, over we, there we've got like a council run out of it well we don't yeah. vote for them but you know yeah hey, but the set I've heard stories about the seven oh, I'll tell you that bastards. you are right there uh, anyway, you said I'll, you had a question mate I've got a question for Aye. you right now he can't afford a loaf of bread I. But you've got five grand to give us. Hey, look, let's not ask questions. Five grand? You uh, said so it was... No, no, that's, it's, it, it, that's per person, Herb, <sighs> to give to the poor from their particular constituency. God, let's, understood. Let's just say that, you know, as, mu- as grumpy as he is, Balasar's a pretty generous man and he's willing to help me out here. And I wanted the best of the best because this is a big bloody mission. Like, I know it seems pretty easy for you guys, like, but, you know, in terms of the, the outcome, this is going to be quite a big thing. So I just wanted to make sure that I had the best of the best and I needed to make sure I could afford the best of well, the best. Well, Quinn, if he fails to pay, we'll take the clocks, yeah? <laughs> yeah, sounds about okay. It probably, sounds okay to me. Probably his head. We can talk about that later. I know you can take the bloody clocks. That ticking all day, it does my fucking head in. In terms of, you say you need proof. Aye. Uh, proof of um, this various chap yes. um, murdering his sister. Aye. Um, so, it, what kind of proof? Are you, are you needing written documentation? A signed confession? Well, you guys kind of talk a lot, and I was getting on to that bit, so I Just will... wanted to make sure you could pay. I... Glad to get your priorities straight, in fairness. Um, right, so, there are three things. Well, there are two things and... No, there's three things you need to get. Three things? Three things. Um, so, you need to go... First off, I think it's probably best if you go visit my friend Larissa. She runs... Larissa. Larissa she runs the, uh, the alchemist that's uh, sort of slightly more oh. inner city. Uh, so, go over there. She has some evidence, well, some very newfangled technology. She's got a thing called a lab report or something. Basically, when I found Fia, um, she had some like, there was like bleaching on her, on her dress, like on her sleeves and stuff. And I wasn't, I wasn't really sure what that was. It didn't seem right. I mean, a, a princess like that, she wouldn't have like damaged dresses or anything so i decided to just cut the bit off send it over to larissa she's very good she's very good um and and see if she could get anything from it you know and um so so she's those reports should be ready for me now um um i think maybe it might be worth going back to the forest seeing if there's anything there um and then i know there's a couple of informants that you should probably meet who can help you get into the palace however I would probably, you know, maybe leave that to last or whatever. Basically, you need to, by the end of tomorrow, because there is a, there is some celebration with a load of different lords and ladies and blah, 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 blah. And everybody's going to be there. And if you take the evidence and you go to the castle, break into the castle, you can catch him red-handed with everybody around to see. Oh, that'd be good, wouldn't it? That'd be good. Mm-hmm. It would be Aye. funny. Mm. Yeah, would like, be funny. I like, you. I like the cut of your jib, little cat lady. Oh, thank you. It's um, I've been growing it. <laughs> <laughs> it's very nice. Thanks. You can give it. You can give it a feel. Oh, I'll give it a Gentle. Shot. Give it straight. Yeah, exactly. Like under under push it. Oh, they're funny little bastards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'd have a go. Have a go. It's funny. I'm okay, darling. Oh. Um, but what I would say <laughs> is. <laughs> The best way you're gonna get it, break into the castle is go into the forest anyway. So maybe forest. like maybe what my, the order that makes sense in my head to do this, and I'm not like railroading or anything. Uh, <laughs> Larissa, informants, forest. That's probably your best bet, or else you're gonna go back and forth and back and forth, and you know. Yeah. It's alright. So right, I've, I've written it down. Have down direct route. Um, j- just in case it comes up, um, where is the princess buried? I buried her deep in the forest. What I wanted is, is for if you know, th- 
he, if he came back out to, to find her or whatever, that she was disappeared. I wanted her to, I wanted him to be scared that she'd gone somewhere else. You know what I mean? I wanted to mess with his head. I can always do the thing. And um, you are very good at the thing. You see, yeah. Herb's very, very good at doing, um, you know, um, like the health thing. Um, is very handy to have She's around. really unhealthy, isn't she? Well, I, I'm I've not, seen I, won't, I won't quite be skilled enough to be able to bring her back. I'm just not there yet. Um, but I'd be able to ask her a few questions. Oh, that sounds perfect. But I, how do you present evidence of, we spoke to a corpse and it said you did it. People just don't it, believe you. I, you'd be getting, you'd, you'd get killed right I there think in the think taking the corpse of a beloved princess to a castle where there's celebrations, that's <laughs> even more no. Uh, no. worrying. We're sneaking, right? And then we'll put her on the throne and then they'll come in and you'll go, Whoa, and then she'll talk <laughs> as they eat it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not like, I like this. I she like this. will really talk to everyone there. She'll kind of just talk to me and oh, then I'll tell everyone what she's... They have to believe you. Yeah. Ah, no, and I work. don't believe in lying, but people don't believe that I don't believe in lying. I don't think people will believe you. You've got a look about you. Shifty. I know, I see what he means. <laughs> <laughs> is there a reflective surface anywhere in this room? <laughs> um, maybe the maybe a boarded up window. He's just looking through. He's just like shifty, shifty. Uh, I mean, I think you don't Very need to do anything too far. I mean, just finding the evidence should be enough, really. But um, and I mean, you know what? It, okay. Whatever you want. Is there anyone close to the king, like uh, an advisor or? Someone he would put a lot of trust into. I'll be honest with you, I'm that's not sure. I'm I'm a big I'm big in the know of that. I think this is gonna be better for those informants. Um, Where are they? They will be meeting you in the uh, the three sons. Uh, which is a lovely little well little it's oh, is it a bar? Huge. It is a bar. Oh, oh, I know oh, that's oh, like oh, centre that is centre city. It's bloody lovely. Uh, I've been in there once, got kicked out twice. <laughs> <laughs> um oh, what's it called again? Sorry. The three sons. The three sons. I I think that's all I can um Very good. I can give you at the moment, but no, if you go go over to see Larissa, she'll she's got some she'll hopefully have the kind of the information that you need. Lovely. Uh, at least to start you off, I suppose. Uh, Hello, girl. As well, leaving, he'll very quickly slip the silver coin he got um, up to the Tom. Was it up on the bunk? Yeah. Yeah. So he'll just like slot it up and then disappear. Oh, the rest yeah. of them. Oh. As Tom, Helix, Tom, as, will, Tom as, will thank you. As Helix walking past, um, uh, uh, Han is trying to work out what his measurements were if if, if they were going to make a suit for him. <laughs> <laughs> just, just trying to clock it. Very tall and near thick skin and bone. Yeah. Or fur and bone. Fur and bone. Um, but aye, before you leave though, I will tell you, so you've got until tomorrow evening, so you've got a bit of time to kind of find your find your stuff. Um you know you know, you've got you've got a bit of time. So make it count. Lovely. Well, off to the alchemist, I suppose. Um it was lovely to meet you all, I think. Um and I do me proud. <laughs> In terms of the payment, I just wanted to double check. Is there is there a if if we don't if we don't get all of it but we get some of it, is there some sort of deal to be had? I mean If you're if you're not able to convince the people and, and and get that king off the throne and in jail for what he's done. You're getting fuck all. Well, <laughs> um, I I I I'm, I have very persuasive ways of making people tell the truth. He annoys them until they do. And I also cast magic that makes people tell the truth. Yeah, well, this is going to be fun. Um, right, off we go. Okay. Shall we? I'll, yes. I'll, I'll catch you, you, you fellas up. Um, where's the little clock, man? Um, so as you um. Ma- uh, Malric will open the door for you so you can come out he'll close it behind you so you, you end up back in Balasar's shop and he's there and he kind of as he sees Han particularly just kind of goes very very to himself just <laughs> so, uh, so you've, you've um, all been... of your information you know what you're doing yeah not very happy with you oh, I've been told you're loaded uh-huh. you've got some kid in there having to steal bread feed him you fucker I do no okay right you clearly have not understood what's happening I feed Tom, Tom stole some bread, and now, and because he was almost arrested for stealing it, he now has to hide in the back room. He's fed, he's watered, he's sheltered. Why is he stealing bread? He was stealing bread before he was in the back room. Oh, boy. Jesus Christ. I mean, it is a shithole, though, yeah? You want to... 
Oh, don't, oh, don't. I, don't. I have told him time and time and oh, time again. Like that little dwarf. Filthy. Malric, no, we, we, we go back a long way, but my God, is he a bad roommate. Well, I'll take it back, little man. You're doing a good thing here, looking after those two. Thank you. It's, well uh, you know, it's the... We were, me, me and Malric, we were, we were roommates at uh, uni, so... Yeah, I have to look after Quinn. <laughs> Uh, no. Yes, yes, of course. And Malric gives Quinn a look that says, "I absolutely know that that is not." <laughs> but I can't be asked to start an argument. <laughs> I just yeah. want him out of my shop. Um, right. Well, have good luck on your journey. Um, I'm sure you can find it all. He's given me some of the details, but not, you know. Mm-hmm. I didn't can't stand to be in that room too long. Um, so yes. Well, good luck. And Han's gonna head for the suit shop. <laughs> so you're gonna go to uh, legacies. Yeah, legacies. Yeah. Uh, Han, Han, we really, we really ought to, you know, do the job first. You do. I'll catch you up. Han, I'm thinking I'll have to make it, and then ne- I can get it tomorrow, can't I? When we got the money. When we have the money. Uh... Also, I'm gonna get a big fella suit. Oh no, 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 no! I'll take blankets, rags. He bandages, clearly no doesn't suit. want it. Not everyone has our particular style. No, but it'll, it'll we can't really force good. it upon those who don't want no, it. No, I know, but once he's got it, he'll go. This is not. Mm. I <laughs> it might be like. And the little fellow wants some shoes. I'm gonna Wait. get him some shoes. <laughs> Come on, lads. You ladies, go on. You two sort that. The out. thing is, though, it's it's need versus um, you know things that we want. So I think um, Hedek, much like myself, we've taken vows of um. Of giving to other people before having for ourselves. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> but we don't need new things necessarily. And you are perfectly happy to take that chainmail. All right, I won't. I'm not. I won't get it's shiny. I won't get him a suit. <laughs> <laughs> we, can, we can do it tomorrow after we've done the job. Well, I'll just go and give him the measurements now. Just you go. I'll catch. How about? You know about what? There's, the no, there's, no, there's, no, there's no arguing with him in this mood. Um, you've just got to let him let him tire himself out, and then we'll we'll go on, and and he'll catch us up. Okay. Um, uh, Coastal Village uh, will uh, is holding in her paw um, the bird uh, <laughs> that Han got out earlier to entertain. Her. Like, <laughs> is um, is this yours or can I eat it? Oh. <laughs> chewy, Chewy, come here. You want me to? Chew? No, you don't, Chewy. Chewy, come here. Chewy keeps me clean. Right. And then it will flit out of your hands if you let two go and it'll just start nibbling off parasites from behind. If you don't want me to have it as a snack, don't let the snack fly around. Right. It's, it's really useful, you'll find out. Shall we? Yes. yes. <laughs> Lovely. Chewy uh, says, Apple, rock, rock. <laughs> <laughs> So, with that. Han is off to drop off some measurements at Legacies, and the rest of the party are heading over to Larissa's, presumably. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's a good enough time as anywhere to end the episode. Um, so, like and subscribe. Yeah, like and subscribe. Do all the things. Please do all the things. Who's um, the most annoying so far? Yeah, yeah tell us who the most yeah. annoying person yeah. yeah. is. Yeah. <laughs> Moa, would you like to say the magic words? Absolutely, darling. I'll do it as Quinn. Um, whatever. Oh, Quinn, you could do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's always lovely to have support. Um, whatever you do in your life, just remember to go out there and roll the damn dice. Bye. Bye.